In this video, we're going to look at how OpenTrack's upload agent um, or timing integration system can synchronize and integrate with your photo finish software, meaning that the results of the track races are uploaded onto the web immediately after the race. Um, this not only eases the workload of your officials and the race director uh, or track judge, but it also uh, gives the spectators and the athletes a better experience as well as they can easily and quickly view results after the race. Uh, as you can see, we're looking at a 3000 meter race hosted by Welsh Athletics. Currently, if we look at the public view, uh, there is no start list yet. So we do need to generate a start list for this as the, um, if we take finish links as the photo finish software, for example, uh, in the event and people files, we need a start list generated so they can upload those properly onto the machine. So there's two ways to do this. We can either fetch a random um, lane draw by clicking this button, or if you want to do a, a specific order, you can input them in the edit by lane, or you can go to the seeding function via the manage tab. I'm just going to do a random uh, one for the purpose of this. So if I click that button there, then uh, all athletes allocated to the, this race are going to be pulled through into a land, random lane draw. So here we have them. We can now head to the manage screen, I'm going to open up a new tab. And we will just want to go down to the timing integration. So here you can see the list of technologies that OpenTrack can interface with. Uh, so we've got finish links, Seiko, Swiss timing and Timetronics. Finish Links is the one uh, most often used uh, within the UK uh, and it's what uh, Welsh Athletics use. So we're going to choose that for this meeting. So we click that here. Um, all of these screens, by the way, uh, for the different uh, uh, softwares look uh, very similar, but they've got slightly different configurable options. So for Finish Links, uh, we can look at the license field contents, choose what we want to have viewing on the people file. I'm just going to leave that as category. Um, but obviously you can have open track ID or the national license number. Um, you can choose if you want the event file just to have the track events or if you want field events on there also. This one is handy. Um, so it means if you've got this ticked and another configurable option, which I'll show you in a second, then whenever a completed event um, has passed, then the event file will re-download and it will remove that event from it. So it's going to have a much cleaner file and it will make it easier for your photo finish operator to use. And then finally, whether you want your event file to include people and whether you want those files to have the full club name as opposed to just the code that um, OpenTrack has given it in our database. I'll just untick that one for now just to save it so you can see. See, very quick, links configuration saved. If I just scroll down, you can see that there are lots of uh, results or lif.lif files in here already. Um, if you have a look, so this is what it will look like. Uh, but the one that we were looking at, TO9, <clears throat> is not in here. So that's what we want to upload. So you want to look at this latest EXE file. If this is your first time using the timing integration software, or if you've not used it in a while, you'll want to click this button. Um, it will make sure that you have the um, most recent and up-to-date software with any development changes. Um, or if it's already on your machine, like I have it, just open it up here. <clears throat> this is what it looks like. So you first need to make sure that the mode is set to the photo finish software that you're using, so finish links. Next will be the folder. So you can just simply browse to a folder on your local machine. Now it's important that this folder that you choose is one that uh, the, on, it's either on the photo finish operators laptop or over a shared network. So essentially what's going to happen is we'll specify a folder where the, the people and event files will be written to and where the um, this program will look for the results files. As you see it's gone green meaning it's correct it's a um, it's a good pathway on my machine. If I now copy the URL I pop that into here You only want the URL up to the end of the slug. You don't need the manage and the links aspect. Finally, 
and your email address. So this needs to be your open track login details, um, which has access to this uh, screen. So the one that uh, you're logged in as a race director. Finally, if you just click this uh, download people and event files, you can see here that within seconds, the machine has generated and downloaded the people file and now the event file for you. So if we go to that folder that we specified, we can see them in here. And just as we configured it, so club code instead of full name. And here we have the category of the athletes as well. Just close that down. And the, these are written within seconds. And this is what your photo finish operator will need to use to um, load into their software. Just minimize that. If you have this auto download button ticked, that's very handy if you've got constantly changing start lists um, or events. So whether you've got uh, late comers or people dropping out, or if you're having to add heats in, if it's an open meeting, or if you've even if you've ticked this event file should exclude completed events. Uh, if you've ticked this auto download button, it means that whenever a change is made that affects the people or event file, it will automatically download a new one. It will override what was already in here, leaving you with the most up-to-date version without you having to manually do anything. So you'll never miss any changes, essentially. Last thing, click this begin uploading button. So now what's happening is every couple of seconds or so, this program is looking into your specified folder for a results file or a, in the uh, finish links case, a lift file. So whenever your photo finish operator drops a results file into that folder, the machine picks it up and sends the results onto the web. So that's why the folder needs to be specified either on their machine or a local network, which uh, they have access to. If we go back to this um, race, this event, see we've still just got a start list here. Now, if I drop the result file, look we can see that it's scanning for uploads it's found it in 1.5 seconds and then the um, it automatically pushes the results up onto the web so within about two seconds after the uh, results file being finalized and saved the results are there for everyone to see now there's quite clearly a big provisional results banner slapped on this here highlighted in orange uh, you can do these one by one to mark as official whenever you're ready, as so. Or you can wait until the end of the meeting um, when everything's been signed off and do them all in bulk, uh, which is obviously a time saver, but uh, it means people are waiting for a while to view that they've become official. But as a track judge or race director, all you need to have done is this program being left running in the background. And whenever the um, lift files or results files are dropped into that folder results are sent up to the web so there's nothing really for you to do um, with regards to this other than check back on it every so often um, you, but you just leave it running in the background and your photo finish operator can just save the results into the relevant file and um, they're, they're pushed onto the web straight away